Lesson nine is going to be on diffusion and effusion rates, which is an SAT2 topic, and also Graham's Law, which is also an SAT2 topic. So we're going to be talking about these two different topics and doing some practice. Diffusion is the spontaneous mixing of the molecules of one gas with the molecules of another. So think food aroma mixing into the air. Effusion is the gradual movement of gas molecules through a very tiny hole into a vacuum. So there's nothing there. The rates at which either of these occur depends on the speed of the gas molecules. The faster the molecule moves, the more rapid it effuses. So if you look at these two pictures, on the left you see diffusion. So it's one gas mixing into another gas. So again, think like the food aroma coming from the kitchen. On the right, this is an example of effusion. Notice that the gas particles are moving through a tiny little hole into a vacuum. A vacuum is a space that contains no matter. This would be a terrible situation for effusion if you were in a spaceship and there's a little tiny pinhole in the window of your spaceship. All of the gas inside of the spaceship will eventually get sucked out into outer space, leaving you incredibly cold and very dead. So Graham's Law was invented or defined by the Scottish chemist Thomas Graham, and he studied the rates of diffusion and effusion through various different methods. He was looking at gases and how they would effuse through porous clay pots and through other small openings. Comparing the different gases at the same temperature and pressure, Graham found that the rates of effusion were inversely proportionate to the square roots of the densities of the gas. That simply means the more dense the gas, the slower it moves. The lighter the gas, the faster it moves. So if you were to think about the difference of neon and helium, when you look at their masses, helium is very light in comparison to neon. So therefore, it will escape at a faster rate than neon. Graham's law is the formula in the bottom right-hand side, which you should be writing down. It is very important that you know what this formula is. So bromine has two isotopes with masses of 78.9 and 80.9 respectively. What is the expected ratio of the rate of effusion for bromine 81 compared to bromine 79? The way that you're going to set this up is that you're going to assign gas A to what you're looking for, which is bromine 81. And then gas B would be the comparison you're making, which would be bromine 79. So if you notice on the bottom of the screen, we have effusion rate of A which is bromine 81, divided by effusion rate of B, which is bromine 79. Under the square root, you invert that ratio with their molar masses. Use the molar mass of the numbers given in the problem. If more specific molar masses are given, then use the most specific mass. So the first thing you have to do is 78.9 divided by 80.9. It will give you an answer. That answer, you then find the square root, and you should get 0 0.99 in this situation. That is the answer for Graham's Law that we are looking for. But what does this number mean? When your answer is greater than 1.0, that means that gas A will effuse at a faster rate than gas B. When your answer is less than 1.0, the rate of gas A will effuse slower than the rate of gas B. Gases with a higher molar mass or a higher GFM will move more slowly, while gases with a lower density and a lower molar mass move faster. This is a very key, important point to Graham's Law and diffusion of fusion. So we can anticipate that bromine 81 would effuse, uh, would effuse slower than bromine 79 because of its original mass. Notice that it is less than 1. Now, if we flip the ratio and try to find this for bromine 79, we end up with 1.01, a number greater than 1. So it definitely does effuse faster than the bromine 81. And again, we're just doing the simple math of a number divided by a number, and then you're finding the square root. 
So rate is defined as the distance something will travel over a certain amount of time. Think of when a car travels 35 miles an hour. This is telling us that in one hour, the car will travel 35 miles if it doesn't change its rate. The rates of the gas is calculated using Graham's law of effusion gives us a similar understanding. Because of our understanding of rate, to calculate for the speed of a compared gas, you take the time of the gas given in the question and divide it by the rate of the other gas. The rate of the other gas must first be calculated using Graham's law. So what is the relative rate of diffusion for SO2 compared to NO2? If the NO2 took 43.2 seconds to diffuse, how long will SO2 take? So the first thing you're going to be doing is finding the rate of SO2 using Graham's law. Since we're looking for the rate of SO2, we can say that SO2 is gas A. The other thing we have to do right away is figure out what is the molar mass or GFM of SO2 and NO2. Those are the first things we have to do. So for step one, let's first figure out our basic formula. The effusion rate of gas A, SO2, the thing we're looking for, over the effusion rate of gas B, which is NO2. We then are going to write our square root sign with a little fraction in the middle because that's where our molar masses are going to go. Don't forget, the gas A is going to be your denominator, while gas B, its mass is going to be your numerator. You plug in your masses, and you'll notice you're going to have 46.0 over 64.1. That answer you find the square root of. When you do that, you should get 0 0.85 for gas A. This means that gas A, which is sulfur dioxide, will diffuse at a slower rate because the value is less than 1. Did that answer make sense to you? Check their molar masses, and does it make sense that SO2 moves slower? We have to then take the amount of time that is passed for NO2, and we're going to divide it by the rate that we just calculated in step one. So again, we take 43.2, which we get from the question. We divide it by Graham's law, the answer we just got. So when you do 43.2 divided by 0 0.85 in your calculator, you get 50.8 seconds. The reason why this is in seconds is because the original time was in seconds. So in this case, one of the gases will escape at a rate of 43.2 seconds, while the other gas, because it weighs so much more and it is bigger and takes up more space, will take a longer time to diffuse.